the father of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when now he was in regard to slaughter him, and there is another link in regard to Abdul Muttalib, because Abdul Muttalib, he used to be the one that discover where the Zamzam was. When the Zamzam was, he was the one that discover where the Zamzam was. So he was the one of those who dig that well. And there was a magician from Yemen, a lady from Yemen, that told them what to do. Do not kill him, but rather sacrifice a hundred camel on his behalf. Rather than killing Abdullah, who was going to be the father of the Prophet wasallam. Now, this is also what we learned yesterday in the wording of Rabbil Alameen. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will remove the harm from the ways of His awliya. Now, see how Allah saved the father of the Prophet wasallam for him to be born. Right? All of this is from what? Ar-Rububiyya, barakallahu fiqh. Ala kullin. This was the proof that we wanted to mention about the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His grandfather having a vow to kill his his father when he was, of course, after the tenth boy. Tayyip. So Shaykh Fadhar Hafizahullah wa Rahi say. So therefore, the individual he will make it upon himself al wafa bi nadarihi. He will make it upon himself to carry out his vow. He will make it upon himself. It will be binding now upon, upon him to carry out his vow. لِقَوْلِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم, Meaning after the person made the vow. فَلْيَلْزِمْهُ That it is for him to be binding upon him to carry out and fulfill his vow. This is a must now when you have the vow. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in a hadith that is akhrajahu barakallah Imam al-Bukhari and likewise in many muhadith they brought this hadith and likewise barakallah fikum Imam Bukhari in another lafz he brought it on the authority of our mother Aisha radiyallahu anha wa arda The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man nadara an yuti'a Allah فَلْيُطِعْهُ He say, whoever, whoever made an oath or a vow to obey Allah, let him fulfill it. Whoever, obey, whoever made a vow to obey Allah, طيب, let him what? Fulfill it. So here, we understand what is called المفهوم ال Mukhalafa. We understand also that the opposite is there and it is valid. Meaning whoever vow to disobey Allah should not carry it out. Right? So here right away we see the condition of a vow. Which is, it has to be what? Upon obedience to Allah. And inshallah there are other conditions of vow that alhamdulillah we will bring about bi'idhnillah ta'ala if the time allows. So the Shaykh Hafizahullah, Shaykh Salaf Fawdan, he mentioned the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he say, whoever, he say, man nadara, whoever has a vow, and you see Allah to obey Allah, he say, let him obey Allah, falyuti'ahu, let him obey him. So you had a vow, that if Allah allow me to go to Togo next year, I will fast one month straight. Then you have to fast one month straight if you find yourself in Togo. I mean, or Togo. You have to, Barakallah. One other, and a vow, no one min anwa al ibadah. It is one of the types of worship. One other, the vow, it is Asha Fawdan. May Allah give him good in this life and this hereafter and the hereafter. And give him a good end, I mean. He say it is one of the types of worship, one of the aspects of worship. لا يجوز إلا لله 
la yajuzu illa lillah it is not permissible except for allah meaning none should be vowing for none but for allah none should be vowing except for allah wallah in this event that we mentioned earlier and that is happening in senegal we heard people saying this openly if serin tuba aid me to have a successful business i will slaughter camels and cows in the magal meaning in that event that they do so shirk all the way min al bidaya ila nihaya from the beginning to the end that statement is all kufr and shirk huh from the beginning because talab li ghayri allah he requested huh no before that wa nadara and then wa dhabaha li ghayri allah all the way the request that he has was for other than allah the vow that he has was for other than allah and likewise the slaughter will be for other than allah so ahammiyat at-tawhid ahammiyat al-aqida and we are living in a day and time that wallah we should never fear never fear to establish the tawhid to speak about the tawhid for the sake of allah and to always ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us patience upon whatever harm will be on our ways because it will be on our ways there is nobody that want to establish salafia except that the harm will be on your way whether coming from your own family members or whether it will be verbal or it will be physical that barakallahu fikum there is something that we got to be ready for and about where is imam ahmed where is ibn taymiyah where are the ulama of the salaf where are they barakallahu fikum except that they were chastised except that they were tortured except that they were exiled except that they were abused except that they were cast out except that they were tortured and the like and the like where were those but us today we just fear that a person will speak about us we fear that a person will point out fingers at us just because of how much we stand we trying to stand and with without a doubt we don't have in the mawqif of imam ahmed we don't have in the mawqif of barakallah ibn taymiyah rahimahullah we don't have in the stand barakallah fikum we are standing for what they stood for we are not but we so quick into yani fearing for the person to just blame us or to blame to blame you or to blame us in in something that is to defend the truth and as i mentioned the other day that some of these whatsapp groups akhi the salaf you don't have no business being in it some of them the salaf he doesn't have no business being in it and i don't care what you do in it whether you just listening or you think that you giving da'wah in it whether you think that you just come in to benefit or you come in to benefit people you don't have no business being in it because if the people of falsehood they have the guts and they have barakallahu fikum no fear in spreading their evil but you the person of the sunnah code and code you cannot say a word in regard to their evil what do you do in those you still going to remain in that you still going to be partaking in that you not going to address the issue that is falsehood you not going to say a word in regard to that falsehood so what do you do in there what are you doing there you not benefiting nobody you are harming yourself because that which was to be to be the benefit you are being quiet about it or you are being forced to not to speak about this you are being forced to as a sakat to be to be silent about it to have a sukut in regard to those matters then what are you benefiting the people in having good akhlaq having good mannerism even if you talk about tawhid you talk about bid'ah you not going to address this issue you are going to be silent about this issue that they say nobody should speak about this matters let everybody do what they want to do everybody do what rock their boats that's all that barakallahu fikum they will do 
Now we don't have no business being in the likes of these groups. But rather we be in growth groups. That alhamdulillah the kalam of the ulama are being mentioned. Being displayed. And we benefit from it. Khalas. Not where somebody will open and say. And this is a matter where there is no restriction. Anybody can. Wa alaikum salam. Anybody can jump in and just type the button and start speaking. Say whatever he want to say. How many people did he affect it? Who knows? But for the people of the truth, they cannot say a word in regard to defending that issue or that individual, uh, the re re uh, refuting that in the individual that has mentioned about the evil that he has mentioned. Now, this is, these are ways, these are places and matters that we got to check our salafiyya. If you cannot say a word, you know what is the meaning of it? Then you got to get out. And if you're getting out, get out with the truth. Let the people know why you're getting out. If you don't have the stand now, just get out. If you don't have that stand, that rujula, that manhood to stand and tell them why you're getting out, then barakallah, if you can at least just leave to safeguard your salafiyya. To safeguard your salafi. And perhaps individuals that have respect for you, will see that you left this group. And them also, they might call you, say, why did you leave this group? And then you will have the opportunity to, inshallah, clarify. For example, you have, uh, in your village, they're, they're building a masjid. And they are asking everybody to contribute. And you know that the leaders of that group, they're not open salafi. Was it up on you to... Akhi, Allah, he told the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he say, La taqum fihi abadan. What was that masjid? Masjid al dira. Don't, you should, the Salafi, is not to put a dime in the masjid that is not established upon Salafiyya. I don't care who's, what village, what tribe, what region, what country, a dime is not to be given to those masjid that are not established upon Salafiyya. Because if the masjid is built, now what will they promote? Now, if you're asking people to contribute their money, you are telling them that come contribute to innovation. Say it. Be man up. Say it. Come contribute to, to innovation. And these things like this, wallahi, we all will face these things, the likes of these issues. Where our own family members will call us to contribute something that is an innovation. Sometimes our own mothers, our own fathers, our own grandparents will call us to contribute to something you know this is innovation. What you gonna say? You gonna be quiet? No. From the rights of the ignorant one is that we educate him, teach him. Tell him, yeah, dad, I love you. And you know I love you. And there is nothing that you ever ask me. And I have it except that I will right away do it. Even if I don't have it, I will try all my way possible from the halal ways to make it possible for your dad. But in this building of a masjid, this is in regard to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we cannot support the people in misguidance. Qala Allah ta'ala, wa ta'awanu ala al-birri wa taqwa Wa la ta'awanu. Clear. Now where are we helping the people from? Are we going to help them in innovation? Akhi Sheikh Muqbir rahimahullah. Let's tell you a statement of the scholar. Shaykh Muqbir rahimahullah rahmatan wasi'ah. This is one of the advice that he gave to those who wanted to build the masajid. They have money, they wanted to build the masajid. He said, when you do it, make sure you place that responsibility upon the hands of the people of the sunnah, the salafiyyin. Now, if a person call you to, for you to be contributing money for your, the, the, the message in your village, Akhi, do not give a dime. And doesn't matter who call you to this. If you can't tell them, listen, what is that masjid is upon? And you know if the leaders of it, they are upon Salafiyya, Akhi, you know that the masjid will not, never, will not be upon Salafiyya from the beginning point of it. So why would you give your money to a masjid that is not upon Salafiyya? Let the wall crumbles. Let the light be turned off. Let the water be cut off. If innovation is in there, we don't support it. We don't even go there to pray, let alone put our money in it. Now these are the things that we got to be strong about. And this is the problem that you and I, we have. 
This is a problem that you and I we have coming from Africa. That we don't have this wala wal bara. 